Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and I'm here today to share an updated sewing room studio tour. I think the last time we filmed a video was about two years ago, and I've had a couple of blog posts in between then with little updates here and there, but we haven't filmed anything. And so since I've just finished up a whole bunch of uh, reorganizing and sorting and had some cabinetry added I thought now would be a great time to just kind of update you on the state of my sewing room and so let's go ahead and get started okay so this is the first thing I want to share with you we had this cabinetry added just a couple months ago and we just feel really blessed to have this great carpenter that we know, I can give him an idea and he can just take it and run with it. Previously, I had three Billy bookcases here, which were a great option for fabric storage. They, they are wonderful units to have, but I kept thinking that if we could do a built-in, we could take more advantage of um, you know, the space that we had here and also go up a little bit higher. So, kind of present, drew out my little sketch and presented it to the carpenter and he came up with this, which I absolutely love. I will say that I had this large space left here so that I could put bolts of fabric if I wanted to. I still think about that, but I don't know, it's been so nice to have just a flat work surface behind me that I don't know if I'll put bolts here or not, or maybe just a few on each end. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But let me just open up the top cupboard. I wanted some open shelving, and then uh, I also wanted some closed shelving. And just a comment right here. I get We get a lot of comments on the blog and the YouTube about the effect of the sun on the fabrics in here. And we do have really, really strong rays here in the Southwest. But when I'm not in here sewing, these shutters are completely closed. So I feel like I am protecting the fabric because the only time the shutters are open is, you know, is when I'm actually in here. And honestly, I've been doing a lot of my sewing in the evening lately, so it, it hasn't been bright. You know, the shutters are open when we film the videos, but other than that, only when I'm sewing. Okay, so up here, I've just got some bins and I also promised myself that I wouldn't buy a single new bin or storage container until I got everything situated, and I haven't. So I've been using what I have, and I might still tweak a few things in the future, and I feel like I might be buying just a couple of new storage containers, but nothing like I would have bought if I just would have gone off on a shopping spree before using everything I have. So these baskets are easy to pull down. I love them. They're from the container store. Uh, I've got everything that I can't see labeled other than up there. And those two bins both have triangle papers in them. So I, I use those frequently, but not so frequently. So I can just get the step stool, get up there and get all of my triangle papers down. Again, like I said, this has been a great workspace, but I will be able to put bolts, it's tall enough for bolts of fabric. Okay, I'm just gonna open these drawers down here and more storage. Really went, made sure everything that's in here has a label on it. And I, I did realize that I actually have some duplicate bins here and so I might be, you know, sorting through these soon and consolidating some of them, maybe uh, doing some scrap bags, but uh, at least I know what is in every single bin. And the bins on the bottom are from Container Store. Those, they're really great bins with the holes so that fabric can breathe. After the carpenter had installed everything, I had him add another shelf because it's so nice to be able to take a project board that has a project on it and just slide it in there. Or uh, sometimes I use trays. Uh, I've got a tray there and I've got a tray here with some scrap projects I'm working on. And so love having those little narrow shelves right there. Okay, over here it's pretty much the same. Just more bins and fabric. And then I think the best thing I did for this cabinetry is to ask for three drawers. I really had never had drawers in my sewing room before. 
and I can't believe how useful they are. I feel like if I were doing a sewing room and I couldn't have built-in cabinetry, I would at least make sure that I had a dresser in my sewing room to have the storage space. And so I've got a lot of things that I use frequently, threads. Uh, I've got a little container in here with all of my most used block lock rulers. So when I'm there at the sewing table, I can just come back here and pull out the block lock that I use. I've got some charging cords. In the middle drawer, I've got all my little sewing kits. So if I am heading off somewhere and I need a binding kit, uh, a couple of binding kits, sewing kits that I can just grab and take with me. And I've got some project storage bags in there. And then in the bottom drawer, I feel like it's just some more bags, things that I take more when I'm traveling. So that's it for this cabinet. It's been really wonderful to have. And I think next we will go into the closet. Okay, so here we are in the closet and I've been super happy with what the carpenter was able to do in here. He actually kind of left the bones of the storage unit that was in this closet and just covered it with some wood with drilled holes and then he trimmed everything out to make it look beautiful. He said in hindsight, he might have just demoed everything. It was, I think this was kind of a lot of work for him to do this, but we've got these shelves that are adjustable. I can change them as needed. I've got my bins labeled and uh, some bigger boxes down at the bottom. I've got a spare sewing machine and my AccuQuilt cutter over there. And then back here, I did leave these big enough for bolts of fabric. And I feel like uh, I put them back in the corner because it's harder to get boxes in and out here, but it's easy to get a bolt of fabric in and out. And if I need to, I could actually do another row of bolts up here. So, but I've got just lots of boxes. They're all labeled. These are scrappy squares. I've got some AccuQuilt Go dies up there. And these are project bins. Now I said I didn't buy anything, but I actually did buy six of these bins because once we had the shelves in, I realized this would be ideal. And so like I've got my Quilting Life block of the month in here, my Blockheads 4, the Holidays sampler that I'm doing for our book, and uh, just some less used project bins up there. These are fat quarter bundles from other Moda designers that I want to sew with and just more bins, but everything is labeled. I really gave myself a hard and fast rule that I couldn't bring anything in here unless it was labeled. I guess this one doesn't have a label, but it also has fat quarter bundles. So, and then over here, I, I'll probably pop up a picture of the, I don't know how much the camera can show, but what I have in this last bank of drawers are my container store bins with scraps, fat quarters and smaller, separated by color. So I've got all of those and there, I've got one, two, three, four, five, so I've got eight of these over here. And then more AccuQuilt dies. Up on the top shelf, I've got batting and soft and stable that I use a lot. I actually haven't put anything up there yet. This closet was an absolute mess before, and so I'm really loving the ability to keep it clean. I am going to slide in my container store rolling cart and keep it right here. I've got that out in the room and I'll show it to you and, and how I use it in a minute. But that that's why this space is open. And I feel like I might put either a quilt up here or a bulletin board or a calendar, something like that, just to have the wall decorated. Okay, that's the closet. Okay, I, I did wanna talk about this. I've, I've shown pictures of it before on some blog posts about the studio, but this is something I had in my other house that I took to the rental and that I brought here and that is so helpful. It's, it's an alpha storage unit from Container Store and it has wheels so I can move it around as needed. And I typically store it in the closet unless I'm bringing it out to work on it. But I have most of these bins labeled. I realized I must have lost that label in the move. I'm gonna have to get another label. But uh, let me just show you how I use it. So I've got some works in progress. These are my plus side blocks that I'm working on. I really wanna start working on this again this summer. And I've got the pattern in my little cheat sheet. 
sticker right there, uh, right here. These are some pillowcases that I want to make. And so I had this empty drawer. And so I put them in here when I get some free time, I'm going to get those finished up. This is English paper piecing. So I have all of my paper pieces and some extra blocks. And, you know, sometimes if I need to, I can come take these and, and, you know, something that's already made and make a small project out of it, a pillow or, or something. So English paper piecing drawer. This one that I don't have labeled, this is background fabric scraps. And this is such a great idea. So these are all my Bella 200s that were left over from other projects. And I can just, you know, if I'm doing a small project, I can, instead of cutting yardage from my bolt, I can just come grab this. This is a bag of Bella Ivory that I'm not using as much anymore, but I still use it with Minnick and Simpson and some of our older collections. This one right here is bag making supplies and some extra stuff, soft and stable. So I've got vinyl, I've got, you know, little clips. There's even more stuff down here. Tape and bag hardware. And then also, you know, when I'm working with quilted soft and stable, I'll put my extra pieces in here because this, this will make a small bag. You know, I, I can still use this. So this is all about bag making supplies and it's just handy to have it in a pull out drawer. And then all the way to the bottom, these are orphan blocks. So, and one of my goals is to kind of get these either put together in a quilt or make some small projects with them. But I find it's a lot handier if it's not in a plastic box that I have to get off a shelf for something like this where I can just pull it out, put them on the table and look at them and hopefully get them used up. So, and I've already told myself that that drawer will not be overflowing. I'll, I'll need to start using some of those projects. So anyway, and up here, this is, I bought this on a quilt retreat and it's great for retreats. It's just a, a mini pressing board and they just took pressed wood and stapled batting and fabric. And it's also nice when I need an extra little bit of ironing space, I can just, you know, cart this around wherever I need it. Okay, we're going to move on and show you some more shelving next. Okay, so this is actually the uh, west wall of my sewing room. And I used to previously have, I believe I had uh, one large Billy bookcase and maybe two smalls. I can't, I'll have to even look at a picture for the old con configuration. But I realized when we moved the shelving for the built-ins, that I could fit two of the larger Billy bookcases here. And so I kept these here. I think someday in the future, it'd be fun to have a really, really fun cabinet here, but this is what's here for now. And I store a lot of my current fabrics that I'm sewing with. These are low volumes from a variety of our collections. And then Seashore Drive, which just came into shops is right there. And then Emma, which I've been sewing with, is right here. My beloved stash of Summer Sweet. It's one of my favorite collections, and I tried to keep a little bit of everything. Uh, some Sincerely Yours, and then down at the bottom, I've just got half yard and smaller, mostly cuts of previous collections. And then I've got some uh, caddies that I've sewn in the past. This one actually has just some sewing kits, some more English paper piecing, which I probably need to add to my English paper piecing drawer. And this one has charm packs from, from almost all of our collections. See where the front is. Oh, the last one was I added in here. Seashore Drive, I need to add a few more. Uh, but just, I try to keep some pre-cuts from all of our collections, just in case I want to make something. So anyway, this has just been really great for storage, some pillows I've made up top. And, and this is a built-in unit that I had done when we first moved in here back in 20, wow, 2020, I guess. So at the time I thought I would do bolts on all three shelves, but I ended up having just a little display area here 
and then some bolts of fabric here as well. And then down in the bottom, there's just a cupboard and I've got pre-cuts and things like that. And then this bin, I absolutely love because I keep large extra pieces of soft and stable there. I had shown you earlier what I do with my scrap pieces of soft and stable, but when they're big, I just roll them up and stand them up in this bin. And I've also found this has been the best place to store my 24 inch rulers and a yardstick. So, okay, so that's it for this side wall. I feel like this is the wall that rarely gets seen in the sewing room. Okay, just another little corner. This is actually a chair that was my husband's grandmother. It's nice when the grandkids come in and they wanna sit in here when I'm sewing or my husband comes in sometimes. Back up a fan from Costco. It gets really warm here in the summer and my iron heats up the room. So I love having this fan that I can move. Uh, this cabinet over here is just from Ikea. And I used to have some stuff stored in those cupboards that I used all the time. Let's see if I can open the door. When I changed everything up, I put some less frequently used items in there. I've got the bins labeled. I've got some cutting mats and rulers that I don't use as often in there, but that I still need. It, it's kind of hard to get into this. And so I feel like this is, you know, stuff that's not used very often, but at least I know where it's at. And then up here, I've got some rulers, some patterns that I'm working on, thread, just knickknacks and things like that. Okay, just a couple quick things to show you here. My Ikea Rascog cart. Love this too, it's on wheels. And I recently just got this bamboo top that will fit on any of the shelves. So if I want to have this as a flat work surface when I'm working and lay out blocks on it, I can move this right here, I can take this out, I can put that wood top and just have another work surface. So that's been super helpful. I've also heard of people who keep their irons in this cart and I feel like that's a really great idea. My sewing machine, I'm still sewing on my Janome Memory Craft 6600 Professional that I've had several years now. It's just still plugging away. Love my pin cushion and thread catcher from Terry at Curry Bungalow. And my chair is from Wayfair. I'll try to put a link to it. It's super comfortable. My friend Val got one in a different fabric and I, as soon as I saw hers, I went home and ordered it and it's, it's very, very comfortable. This light is incredible. It just hooks on to the other end of my sewing table and just shines light exactly where I need it. I absolutely love this light. And the sewing table is actually by Janome too. I get a lot of questions about that. My husband bought it when he bought the machine for me. So that's it for just right here where I sew. I, I often can have these windows open if it's not too hot and get a glimpse of the outside world while I'm sewing. Uh, we just have a couple more things to show you and we'll move on to the new ironing station next. Okay, so this is something else that's actually brand new in the sewing room. I, ever since I went to a retreat at Lisa Bonjean's, and wow, this was probably back in 2013, uh, she had these beautiful pressing tables, and I asked about them, and they were by Tracy's Tables, and I just kind of kept a link to that, and I thought about ordering one recently, but they are really backlogged right now, and it was, it was gonna take six or eight months to get one, and so I just showed the picture to my carpenter, and I said, you know, I'd really like some more drawers. At this point, we'd already had the, the drawers over there, and I said, maybe some open shelves, and I had this wool pressing mat, and I said, maybe you can just make it to fit this, uh, because I know I can purchase these again and again when they go bad. 
And so that's what he did. He just designed it and he put it on wheels so I can actually move this if needed. He uh, added some fun little trim pieces and he just does great work. Uh, so I've got these open shelves like I keep my my best press and the little plastic thing I use to fill up my iron. I've got some, uh, you know, a cutter for when I'm cutting up chain piecing and some wonder clips, some large ones when I'm working on a project and might need to clip something together. Uh, and these drawers, actually the bottom one is still empty. I'm still trying to decide what to put in there. But I did in the top drawer, no, I guess it's the middle drawer, I've got my clappers. This one's by Modern American Vintage. Really heavy and beautiful. And uh, wonder clips are a good thing to keep at the ironing board. Sometimes after you've pressed something, you want to pin it together, clip it together. So yeah, and then I've also got my little pressing bar in the top drawer. It's really nice to have these things really close to the iron. And I do have another wool pressing mat that I've been putting on top of here when I press so that it doesn't go through to this. I know I'm, I wanna make sure that I don't damage the wood under here. And so what I've actually been doing too after I press is I've been removing this and let it, letting it air out. And so far that has seemed to work really well. And I did actually just order a bigger mat wool mat to put on top of this and love my Rowenta iron okay so this is just an Ikea uh, table that I originally bought I thought I was going to use it for my ironing station but it ended up just fitting perfectly <laughs> under this window and I just have a lot of storage and bins of scraps from various collections that I use pretty frequently and up on the top, this it works great to keep a lot of things here that I am using so that it doesn't clutter up my main work table. Uh, I've got some rulers here that I'm going to be using for a quilt along soon. I haven't even taken them out of the packages. L love this lamp. I will link this one too. It's great to have a little bit of extra light over here when I'm working. Also, I just wanted to mention really quick, I get questions all the time about this storage piece in the back. I actually bought it online from Magnolia, from their shop. I think it was an antique. I, I'm not even sure, but I've had it for several years. I don't know if they're still selling anything like this now, but it sure has worked great to keep my scissors and pens and pencils and a few little other tools in. Just, just a really nice storage. Uh, Ikea unit that I'll again I'll link I actually built it in this room so I'm not sure if it would ever fit out the door but also just want to mention really quick we have one more thing we're going to show you before we close but I'm not really going to go over my center cutting table uh, well I'll put the information for it below to my knowledge it's not being made anymore people have written me over the years and for a while people were able to find them in furniture stores all over the country, but lately uh, people that have done the research have said it's no longer being manufactured. They have found them on yard sales and Facebook marketplace places, but it's just a really great island that was made for a kitchen, I believe, that I've been able to use as my main cutting table. Okay, about that center island also, it does have four small drawers, a couple cabinets, and some open uh, storage on the end. Uh, if you want to take a closer look at that, I, you can look at the previous video that we did of the sewing room back in 2020, and I also have some pictures of it on some blog posts that I'll link. Okay, just one more thing I want to show you. I've actually been meaning to show this to you for a while. Last fall, the people at Best Craft Organizer sent me this little unit to review, and it actually is a, a great unit. You have to put it together. Uh, their company started, I believe, with mostly storage for scrapbooking and jewelry making, but it really does translate well for quilting supplies. There are drawers. Uh, my unit actually has casters available, and they have a wide variety of units. I'm not gonna put the casters on it. I'm, I'm actually gonna use this for some 
off-site fabric storage in another room so I can have it available when I'm writing and, and working. But the drawers are great. You can get bigger, deeper drawers. And there's also smaller drawers where you could put templates or rulers or paperwork or patterns. They also have these little drawer dividers. I'm not sure I can take, I'll have to take a picture and we'll pop it up, but that you can separate charm squares, mini charms, two and a half inch strips, one and a half inch strips. So I've, I've got some of those dividers in here. But anyway, it's just another option if you're looking for extra storage in your sewing room. Without the casters, you could set this on a shelf or on the floor. And with the casters, you'd be able to move it around. Okay, so that's it for my studio tour. I hope that you enjoyed it and that maybe you got some great ideas for organizing and working in your own space. I feel like sewing rooms are always a work in progress and there are always going to be updates and little tweaks and changes that can be made. And so I'm always on the lookout. I love seeing other people's spaces to get ideas and hope this was helpful. We have linked everything I can think of to link in the description below. But if there's something that we missed, please leave a comment and uh, we'll get that link sent out to you. If you liked today's video, please share it with a friend, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thanks so much for stopping by.